So welcome to Vermillion Peak in the Kootenays. So this is where I'm gonna introduce this video. So we're here skiing with my friends. Hi! Hello. And this is a beautiful place, beautiful day. Look at that peak and the views. Isn't it awesome? So what we're gonna talk about in this video is uh, limits of indeterminate forms and L'Hopital rule. Woohoo! And I'm gonna enjoy a wonderful ski run. See you soon! Hello everyone. In order to proceed further with uh, integrals, we need to be better at evaluating limits. So what we're going to do in this video is take a step back and go back to the evaluation of limits. We're going to study a new method, which is super powerful. It's called L'Hopital Rule, and it's very, very, very useful for evaluating limits that are indeterminate. All right, so let me first remind you what we did last semester. So we studied a certain type of limit. For example, we, if we had the limit as s goes to 2 of x squared minus 4, over x minus 2, then we realize that this is a case of the type 0 over 0, because as x goes to 2, the numerator and the denominators are both 0. But in this case, we could actually evaluate the limit, because we could realize that the numerator actually factorize to x minus 2 times x plus 2, and then we can uh, simplify, and we end up with the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 2, which is just equal to 4. All right, that's all good. That's one way of evaluating limits of the type 0 over 0. But it only works if you can do an algebraic manipulation, and that simplifies the expression. Right? You cannot always do that. Right? For example, another case was the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. In this case, this is still a 0 over 0 case, but we cannot simply uh, do some algebraic manipulation to simplify the expression. So how can we evaluate this limit? Well, we actually did this calculation last semester. The result is 1. And what we did is use some very fancy uh, calculation using the squeeze theorem and so on. But is there a better way of evaluating limits, indeterminate limits like that, without having to go through the whole squeeze theorem stuff? Well, it turns out that there is, and this is called L'Hopital rule, and it's a very, very uh, important uh, way of evaluating limit. All right, so suppose you have two functions, f and g, that are differentiable. You need to assume that the derivative of g is not zero in some open interval that contains the point where you're going to take the limit. Now the statement is if you have if you take the limit of the quotient of the two function and that it turns out to be of the type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So in other words, the limit of f is zero and the limit of g is zero, or both limits are plus or minus infinity. If this is the case, then L'Hopital rule says that the limit as x goes to a of the quotient here is the exact same thing as the limit as x goes to a of the quotient, but of the derivative functions. Now, this is very useful because this might be indeterminate, but this may actually be uh, finite or, or infinite or, or whatever, but it may be uh, possible to evaluate the right-hand side here. So that gives a very powerful way of evaluating limits of the type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Now, it's important to note here that in L'Hopital rule, on the right-hand side, this is not the derivative of the quotient, right? This is not the same thing. We're not taking the derivative of the quotient. We're taking the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. It's very different. All right, so let me just do a few examples of how you can use L'Hopital rule to evaluate indeterminate limits. So let's start with the example that we have. So limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Well, the first thing is to realize, to uh, check whether it's a type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. In this case, this is 0 over 0, so that's fine. So what L'Hopital rule tells me is that this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of the function upstairs over the derivative of the function downstairs. So derivative of sine of x is cos of x. Derivative of x is 1. Now that's great. Because now this is perfectly well defined. The limit of this expression as x goes to 0 is just 1. Ha! So you see how powerful this rule is. All right, let me do two more examples. Suppose that I have the limit as x goes to infinity of log of x over x minus 1. All right, so is that of, uh, well, first is that indeterminate. So the numerator as x goes to infinity is infinite. Denominator is also infinite. So I get a limit of this type. So that's great. I can use L'Hopital rule. What will I get? 
get the limit as x goes to infinity, derivative of log of x is 1 over x, derivative of x minus 1 is 1, so in other words I get the limit as x goes to infinity, 1 over x, which is just 0. Alright, so the first case I got 1, second case I got 0. It could be anything, right? These indeterminate forms can give 0, 1, plus or minus infinity. You don't know. You just have to evaluate the limit. Okay, and let me do one last example. So if I have the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x minus x over x cubed, so as x goes to 0, sine of x minus x is equal to 0, and the denominator is also 0. So that's of this type. So I use L'Hopital rule. Derivative of the numerator gives me cos of x minus 1 over 3x squared. But now as x goes to 0, this is still of the type 0 over 0. Right? Cos of x minus 1 is 0, and 3x squared is still 0. So I cannot uh, evaluate this, but what can I do? Well, this is still 0 over 0, so I can apply the L'Hopital rule again. So sometimes you may have to apply the rule more than once, but that's perfectly fine. You can keep going. So I get the limit as x goes to 0. Now if I take the derivative of the numerator here, I get minus sine of x. In the denominator, I get 6x. This is still the type 0 over 0. So I apply the rule once more. I get minus cos of x over 6. Aha! It is not now indeterminate anymore, so I can evaluate this as x goes to 0. This becomes minus 1 over 6, which is the final result for the original limit. So the lesson here is that sometimes you may have to use L'Hopital rules more than once, but that's perfectly okay. All right, so L'Hopital rule is a very powerful method for dealing with indeterminate limits of the type 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. But it turns out that there's many uh, more forms of indeterminate limits, so that's what we're going to study next. All right, so we saw that L'Hopital rule is a very powerful method for evaluating indeterminate limits of the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. But what about indeterminate limits of other forms? Suppose you have a limit that gives you 0 times infinity. How can you evaluate that? Well, it turns out that the trick is always the same. We somehow want to transform the limit so that we end up with a limit of the type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity so we can use L'Hopital rule. But let me just study all other indeterminate forms uh, case by case. All right, so let's start with the case where you have a limit that gives you 0 times infinity. So this would be something like you have limit as x goes to a of a product of two functions, say f of x and g of x, and such that, say, the limit of f of x is 0 and the limit of g of x as x goes to a is infinity. All right, so how can we evaluate that? 0 times infinity is not necessarily 0, that's what you may think, but in fact, that's not true. It could be 0, but it could also be any finite number, or it can even be infinite. So how can we evaluate this limit? Well, let's just work in, through an example, and then we'll deduce how we can do it in general. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x times log of x. All right, so first we can check what case this is. Well, this is 0 times, and as x goes to 0, log of 0 is minus infinity, so this is a 0 times infinity case. All right, so let me do a little trick here. I'm going to rewrite the exact same expression, but in a different way. Instead of writing x times ln of x, I'll write ln of x divided by 1 over x. That's clearly the exact same expression, but now the beauty of this is that if I look at this expression, this is not a 0 times infinity case anymore. This is a infinity over infinity case as x goes to 0. So now I can use L'Hopital rule on this expression. So if I use L'Hopital rule, I get the limit as x goes to 0 plus. Derivative of log is 1 over x. Derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, which is really just the limit as x goes to 0 plus of minus x, if you simplify, which is just 0. So in this case, we get 0. But the idea here was the first step. This was the crucial step here, which was, which was to rewrite the expression so that we end up in either a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. So generally speaking, what you want to do in this case is rewrite the expression either as, say, g of x over 1 over f of x, which would give you infinity over infinity, or as f of x 
over 1 over g of x. Either case may, may work, so you have to try. Uh, and, and then one of them, uh, in both cases, then you can use leptal rule and try to evaluate the limit. All right, so there's other indeterminate forms. Say you have a limit that gives you infinity minus infinity. What is this? Well, you may think it's zero, but in fact, it may also be anything else. It could be finite or it could be infinity because you cannot, it's, it's hard to compare infinities, right? It's not just like standard finite numbers. So this could be anything. It's actually indeterminate. So let's uh, just do an example and see what you can do. All right, so I'm going to take the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the negative side of the expression secant of x minus tan of x. Well, secant of x is 1 over cos of x, so as x goes to pi over 2, this is infinity. And tan of x is sine over cos, so as x goes to pi over 2, this is also infinite. So I get infinity minus infinity. What can I do? Well, the idea here is just the same as before. We want to somehow transform the expression so that we end up in a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. Now, there's no kind of uh, technique. You can always use, uh, you can use in all of these cases to transform the expression. Here, you have to be creative. Maybe put things on a common denominator. Try things so that you can transform the expression or manipulate the expression. In this case, the easiest way is probably to rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So I would get something like that. And the reason why I want to do that is that now I can put everything on the common denominator. So what will I get? I get 1 minus sine of x over cos of x. Now this is a still indeterminate, but it's of a different type. So numerator here goes to 0, denominator as well. So this is a 0 over 0 case. So that's great because now I can apply L'Hopital rule. Derivative of the numerator here gives me minus cos of x. Derivative of the denominator gives me minus sine of x. As x goes to pi over 2, denominator is minus 1, but the numerator is 0, so I get 0, which is my answer. So it turns out that in this case, indeed, infinity minus infinity gave 0. But that's a special case. It could be really anything else. Okay, so that's how you deal with these limits. You somehow want to be creative and transform them so that you end up with a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. And the last type of indeterminate limits that I want to talk about is slightly more complicated. So this is the case where you have either 0 to the exponent 0, infinity to the exponent 0, or 1 to the exponent infinity. Each of those here is indeterminate. So it's not clear. I mean, for example, infinity to the 0 is not necessarily 1, or 0 to the 0 is not 0, it's not 1. You don't know. It could be anything. So you have to somehow evaluate, find a way of evaluating the limits. Okay, so let's do an example. Suppose I want to calculate the limit as x goes to 0 plus positive side of, what do I have here? I have x to the exponent of x. Well, this is clearly a case 0 to the exponent 0. So what can I do? Well, the trick in this case is just like we did uh, when we did logarithmic differentiation, is to take the logarithm of the function and then evaluate the limit. So why would we want to do that? Well, if we take the logarithm, this will bring the exponent down. So we'll end up in a case that we already know how to deal with. So we'll end up with some either 0 times infinity case. In fact, we're always going to end up with a 0 times infinity case in these. So then we can manipulate it and use the Pital rule to evaluate the limit. All right, so let's do it in this case. So if y is equal to x to the exponent x, log of y is equal to log of x to the exponent x. That brings down the exponent, which is egg x log of x. So what I want to do is first evaluate the limit of log of y. Once I know what this is, then I'll know that the limit of y is just the exponential of my result. So I first evaluate limit as x goes to 0 plus of log of y, which is the limit as x goes to 0 plus of x log of x. This is a case 0 times infinity. In fact, this is a limit that we've already studied two slides ago, so I'm not going to redo the calculation. Here you would want to rewrite that as log of x over 1 over x, then use L'Hopital rule. But we've already calculated that, and we ended up uh, with the result that the limit is equal to 0. All right, but that's not the end of the story. That's the limit of log of y. So what is the limit of y? So in other words, what is the limit 
x to the exponent x, well, this is the same as the limit of y, which should be just the exponential of my result, so e to the 0, which is just 1. So I found that the limit of x to the x is actually equal to 1. All right, so this is a little more complicated, but it's very similar to what you did when we did logarithmic differentiation.